Aloha, my name is Mark Ambler. I'm the chairman of the Environmental Council Information and Outreach Committee. And this is a presentation on genetically modified organisms and pesticides in Hawaii in preparation for our meeting on October 17th, 2013. So the information that's in this presentation has been collected from publicly available data. And the intent is that the viewer make their own assessment for the validity of the information as well as base conclusions on their own, on their own judgment. And this presentation is not intended to represent the views of the IO Committee or the Environmental Council or the State of Hawaii. Uh, it's primarily uh, developed by me to support proposals that I'm going to be making to the IO Committee. So this process will start with a meeting on October 17th at 12 p.m. There's going to be uh, motions presented there's going to be discussion, public input, and then eventually a vote. And then at 2 p.m. we'll take the motion to the Environmental Council and it will be voted on there as well. Any motions that pass will be given to the director of the OEQC who will disseminate that information to DOH and Department of Agriculture. And this is a cyclical process, so if there's additional recommendations that we feel need to be done, we'll go through the process again. Glyphosate was discovered in 1970, and Monsanto brought it to market in the 70s under the trade name Roundup. And Monsanto's patent on glyphosate expired in 2000. So since then, there's been quite a bit of glyphosate pesticides developed by various manufacturers. This is a non-all-inclusive list, but it shows you how many there are in general. Hawaii has uh, a set of tier one environmental action levels. So this is developed by the Department of Health and they present these action levels in what they call an EAL surfer which is a Excel spreadsheet that's really useful. You can use it to determine the action levels for certain contaminants. I've chosen glyphosate for this uh, this list here and I want to point out that the action level for groundwater due to impacts to aquatic habitats is 65 micrograms per liter. And there's also a soil action level and a gross contamination action level. The action levels due to potential health effects uh, specify that targets are the kidney and the reproductive system. There are also several studies out there that look at suicide attempts using glyphosate pesticides and one of those situations, ingestion of 85 milliliters resulted in the death of a person. To caveat that, there are other situations where ingestion of 500 milliliters did not result in a death. So the percent uh, death, death rate of suicide attempts is between 3.2 and 29.3 percent. The EPA is tasked with regulation of certain pesticides under FIFRA including biopesticides, microbial pesticides, plant incorporated protectants, which are typically GMO products. EPA, and they also set the EPA tolerance limits for residual pesticides in foods. So they're mandated to set a tenfold margin of safety due to exposure to infants, unless they determine uh, there's a different margin of safety that would be safe for infants. For glyphosate, the EPA has reduced that margin of safety to one times rather than ten times. The FDA takes the limits that are set by the EPA and along with some other food safety and nutritional assessments conducts pesticide uh, residue sampling and a program where they uh, use selective monitoring to achieve an adequate level of consumer protection. The latest report from the FDA has the list of pesticides that they're looking for. And these are just the first two pages of that. It's in alphabetical order. Uh, but important to note is that they do not test for glyphosate. The USDA did a study in 2001 on herbicide application and found that glyphosate is the most applied uh, herbicide. USDA also monitors uh, pesticide residue, residues in food. They screen over 172 pe pesticides, but again, 
important to note is that they do not test for glyphosate. The EPA did a study and reported to Congress in 2004 the results of the top sources of impairment to rivers and streams. EPA has established programs for regulation of storm water from municipal discharges and from urban runoff, but there is an established program for runoff from agriculture, although it is the uh, top source of impairment to rivers and streams. In Hawaii, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting represents $406 million of our GDP. So this is a Google aerial map uh, that shows Wailua and the surrounding area. And you can see there's quite a bit of farm uh, agricultural land in the area. This was taken uh, on the 29th of January, the day before, on the 28th of January, there was some rain recorded at Wheeler, uh, 0.16 inches, so not uh, typically high rain rate. Uh, but I'm going to zoom in to the Haleiwa area and point out that there's a heavy sediment load on Kayaka Bay. There's also sediment that has made its way across the beach and out into the ocean. This is an aerial map from Google Earth for Kauai on January 7, 2005. Again, uh, centered around an agricultural area. I'm going to zoom in on a couple streams over here and point out sediment discharges from those streams and the resultant plume in the receiving water. This is a Google Earth aerial map for Kauai, March 28, 2011. Uh, not as much vegetation cover on the agricultural areas as the previous aerial map. I'm going to zoom in over here. You can see this uh, unvegetated area here and the plume in the receiving water just downstream. So Hawaii has a really high soil metal background concentration and this was quantified recently in a May 2012 report that was commissioned by the Department of Health and they found that uh, copper background concentrations are 98.5 milligrams per kilogram and iron is 108,000 milligrams per kilogram, which compared to uh, soils across the nation, this is relatively high. There's a study done that glyphosate is found in higher concentrations in soils that have these chelating metals like copper and iron. So it found that there was uh, 4.5 times higher glyphosate in elevated copper samples and a tenfold, uh, sorry, 11-fold um, glyphosate concentration in elevated iron sediment. So what this means is it would be anticipated that Hawaii sediments will have higher concentrations of glyphosate uh, than typical soils and decreased bioavailability so it'll take longer for them to dissipate. This is a safety data sheet for Roundup Power Max herbicide. I'm going to focus on the aquatic toxic toxicity for algae and aquatic plants. This test is done on green algae and at a concentration of 0.46 milligrams per liter within 72 hours half of the algae is dead. So this results in a highly toxic uh, finding for algae and aquatic plants. Zoox is an algae that has a symbiotic relationship with corals and it's essential for the survival of cor corals. In Hawaii we have a unique aquatic food chain so algae and aquatic plants are the base of that chain. If you take away or reduce those items, you reduce the food source for the smaller fish and the um, other uh, species that feed on those items. And then in turn, the larger fish and species that feed on those are, are affected. More specifically, opihi, ulua, coral, and Hawaiian feather dusters are all known to reside in nearshore areas and there are studies that show reduced uh, reduced uh, counts of alua and opihi which have been related to overfishing and overcollection but uh, 
the reduction of algae in the nearshore waters will have an effect on those. So my recommendations are to the Department of Agricultural, Agriculture and the Department of Health. The Department of Ag regulates pesticide products and they set fees for uh, registration of pesticide products. And the Department of Health has a compliance uh, uh, program and as well as has a food and drug, drug branch that could do the residue sampling. So in the statutes, the Department of Agriculture um, has by law the capability to determine unreasonable adverse effects on the environment due to pesticides. They can prohibit the use of any pesticide in a manner that would have unreasonable adverse effects on the environment. They can cancel or suspend pesticide uses that have that unreasonable adverse effect on the environment. And they can set the fees. So currently the fees set for pesticide registration are $330 for three years. So it's $110 a year, but it's not based upon volume. So if you had one gallon of pesticide that came into the state, you would still have to pay $110 a year. If you had 100,000 gallons of pesticide, uh, it's still that $110 per year. Uh, another statute sets up a pesticide, pesticide use revolving fund that is uh, able to be used for compliance monitoring activities. So my recommendations uh, first, that the Department of Agriculture immediately raise fees on pesticide licenses to cover the anticipated costs of additional regulatory efforts. And I think those fees should be related to the volume that's sold or distributed in Hawaii. The Department of Agriculture should make an unreasonable adverse effect determination on use of glyphosate, atrazine, and 2,4-D that results in contaminated runoff due to toxicity of non-target organisms. So these three pesticides are identified by the USDA as the top three uh, herbicides that are applied. And there's also tier one environmental action levels set by the Department of Health for these pesticides. I recommend that the Department of Health here branch conduct an investigation to the extent of these aquatic impacts of pesticide runoff and that the Department of Agriculture fund this investigation through the Pesticide Use Revolving Fund. I also recommend that the HERE Department follow up this investigation with uh, site-specific regulation using the EHE and EHMP program, which is Environmental Hazard Evaluation and Environmental Hazard Management Plan program, which I think is the most efficient way to regulate these sites quickly and effectively. I recommend the Department of Agriculture uh, make available to the HERE branch any restricted use pesticide, pesticide information that it doesn't publish already to support these regulatory efforts. They need to know what they're looking for. And it's also important that the DOH Food and Drug Branch implement an annual food pesticide regu res residue sampling program. And they got to include glyphosate and they got to sample infant food products. Uh, I recommend that the Department of Agriculture fully fund the sampling program using the Pesticide Use Revolving Fund. So to conclude, uh, this is what I think the future of agriculture, of large-scale agriculture in Hawaii looks like. This is a retention pond where sediment uh, can settle out of, of the water before it's discharged into the receiving waters. This is where pesticides can biodegrade before they're discharged, as well as fertilizers can biodegrade. And this also creates a source of irrigation water um, if needs be. So with that, thank you for your time and hope to see you on October 17th. Bye.